Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at question 228, summary ranges. The way we'll be approaching this problem is by um, using two pointers, start and previous. And the previous, num uh, previous pointer will keep a track of the previous number that we've seen. And the start pointer will keep a track um, of the first element that we've seen for a given range. Awesome, so let's get started. The first thing you need to do is actually create um, an array list that needs to be returned. Let's call it result awesome. Um, and there are two base cases that we need to cover where the length of the array is 0 or 1. So let's do that. So let's get the length so if uh, length is equal to zero, you just return it as is the uh, the resulting array list that we created. If length is equal to one, uh, you need to add that given element in the resulting uh, array list and then send it back. So it would be res.add um, terms of zero. Um, and since it's strings, let's just add plus um, an empty string just so that it, it gets casted to a string. Awesome. So once you have that, uh, you need to actually cover um, everything else. So let's create the two pointers that we talked about earlier. So start, um, let's say, number zero. Previous would also be numbers of zero because there's the last element that we've seen, um, and it starts with zero as well. So since we've already seen, as in like the previous element that we've seen is already assigned to the first element in the array, the i, um, like the for loop will, will start with one, as in like the first, um, the second element. Um, i is less than length, and then you keep incrementing i. Awesome, so once you're in the for loop, you need to check if um, the given uh, number or the given element that you're looking at is equal to previous dot one. That means there is a range that's going on. So you just assign previous to nums of i, right? If not, if you don't see uh, like the previous element is equal to the next element plus one, that means um, a range has already been completed and you need to see how to add it. So and there are two ways of adding it, right? It could either be a sole element, as in like just one element that's added, or a range that's added. So how do you figure that out? The way you figure that out is by actually comparing the start and the previous values. If they are the same, that means that element exists by itself, and there's no range to it. So you just add res.add uh, start. And since it needs to be a string, we just add an empty string to it so that it gets casted. Else, as in if they're not the same, that means there is indeed a range. So it would be start plus, um, you need to add the arrow, um, plus previous. Awesome. So if this is the case, right? Um, like a range has already been added. So you need to start a new range to keep a track of it. So you'd reassign start to be numbers of i and previous to be numbers of i as well. Awesome. Uh, once you're done with the for loop, you need to do one last check to add these numbers. And the reason why we do that is because once you've already reached the end of um, end of the array, the input array that's given to us, you don't really add anything. As in, like, okay, let's say you already assigned a range, um, and they've been assigned here. Uh, but because we don't go through the for loop again, because it's just restricted to the length of the array, we need to do one last check in the end to see what range should be added. We know a range should be added, but we're just checking how to add it, and you add it as is. And then in the end, you, re you return the resulting array. Awesome. So let's try compiling this and see if it's okay. The first two test cases are okay. Nums output one one uh, expected minus one. Okay, so where 
did I go wrong? Oh, in the... Wait, I think so this is the problem right here. I know we need to definitely add this. Oh, here, this is the problem. If the length is equal to one, you just need to add it and return the result itself. We don't return it, and then we go through the for loop. That was the problem. Okay, I think this should be okay. Let's try compiling it again. The first two test cases are okay, as previously seen. Everything else is okay as well. Awesome. So let's talk about the space and the time complexity. The time complexity of the entire solution is off. And since we have to go through all of the elements that is given to us in the input array, and the space complexity is off and as well because we are using an additional data structure to store all of the elements. Awesome, so that's how you solve the problem. If you have any questions uh, about how, how I solved it, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I would really, really appreciate that. Um, it definitely motivates me to make more videos. Um, so thanks so much. I'll see you folks on the next video. Peace.